let's try to have something a little more sunshiny. You know, I, I try, I, I encourage women to write into my podcast. I've been begging you guys for the, like the last six months to a year at, so I can balance this out because I don't want to keep trashing women. It's just so fucking easy. So here we go. I got this woman wrote in. Thank God a woman wrote in. Please write in. Trash guys. I know we're morons. I need, I need balance here. This is as balanced as MSNBC or Fox News. I want to smooth it out here. Here we go. All right. Some lady wrote in. All right. Toilet. Uh, Bill, I have a question about men and their bathroom habits. My husband and I have a great relationship. We just celebrated our fifth wedding anniversary and are very happy. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. You have something most people do not have. You have a happy marriage. Marriage. Sorry, I got the hiccups. Um, anyway, she said, the only things we ever seem to argue about are manners and housework. Uh, we come from different backgrounds and were raised differently regarding manners. He doesn't believe... Um, he doesn't believe that manners are important <laughs> while well, I do. We both had to adjust to this, and it has certainly been a, um, a process. My standards for living have been lowered, and his have been raised. We're somewhere in the middle at this point. Um, he has really made an effort over the years in terms of cleaning up after himself and not being gross. Uh, but the one area that has always been a problem is the toilet. At first, he rarely put the seat down, and it drove me crazy. Um, he's wicked smart. He went to Harvard and always philosophizes his way out of arguments. His main argument for leaving the toilet seat up is that it isn't fair. Women and men are equals, blah, blah, blah. He also likes to use the argument that gay men probably leave the seat up all the time. Uh, I'm an interior designer and have several gay male friends, and they all say they put it down because who wants to look at the inside of a toilet? Uh, the last thing I could say about it was, please just do it as a favor to me. He said he would, and I believed him. A few weeks ago, I was taking a bath, and I left the door ajar because he worries I'll drown or something if I lock the door. Well, look at that. He's a great guy. He's concerned about you. You know, there's a lot of people that, that could give a shit. So anyways, she's in the bathtub with the door ajar a little bit. He says he suddenly came in and sat down on the toilet in front of me, and I was stunned and asked, are you pooping? And he said, no, he was just peeing. So now, he's pee now he pees sitting down and insist that this is normal for men. This is where we are right now in the toilet seat argument. He thinks he's being considerate, but really he's just super stubborn about the toilet seat. He also has no problem of going to the bathroom in front of me, and I wish there was more of a boundary when it comes to the bathroom in general. This idea has infected my brain so much, it just seems so unmasculine to me to see a man peeing sitting down that it's, it's now to the point that I think it's attractive when men pee standing up. So, Bill, what do you think? My husband loves your podcast and listens every morning. Yada, yada. What do I think? Uh, he's a great husband. He loves me, takes care of me, makes me laugh, and he's gorgeous. But the toilet issue weirds me out. All right. Where to start? First of all, this whole toilet issue, this whole tradition that has basically been started, I don't know where it began, but how if the man leaves the toilet seat up, he's the biggest fucking asshole on the face of the earth. I don't understand it. I don't understand why we are required to do it. I've never heard a woman give me a good argument as to why. They say dumb shit like, so I don't fall in the toilet. And it's like, that's my fault? You fell in the toilet? Who in their right mind drops their pants and sits on something without looking at what they're sitting on? Do you understand that? You're out of your mind. That's on you. Like, why, why does the toilet have to be totally set up for you but I can go fuck myself. How come, how come when you're done with it, why can't you lift the seat up? If anything, it's, more, it's easier for you to put the seat down than for me to put it up. I'm working against gravity. You know? And it'd be one thing if you said, oh, here's one for you. If you want him to put the seat down, because this is what's really going on. You've nagged him enough, and it's annoying him that he has to put the fucking seat down. All right, so now what he's doing is what he's, he's actually, he's brilliant. He knows that peeing sitting down is weirding you out. Well, he's doing this passive-aggressive shit where he's like, all right, you want the seat down? Fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start peeing sitting down like a woman and make it all fucking weird for you, and then I'm going to act like, no, no, this is more efficient. I like it. I'm enjoying this shit. He's, he's playing the only card he has. I think it's fucking hilarious. Um, this is my advice to you. If you want him to go back to peeing, standing up, and putting the seat down, basically your dream bathroom situation, why don't you give up something? Why don't you say, okay, if you do that for me, I will do this. You know? Why don't you say, like, look, if you go a month straight 
uh, you know, and and always put the seat down. After 30 days, I will give you the most insane blowjob you've ever had in your life. Okay, why don't you do something? Okay, instead of acting like you're 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 fucking some sort of royalty, and that everything should just be set up for you. All right, I agree with you. That's fucking weird. It's weird for me to picture him sitting down, but I think he's doing it in this passive aggressive way, which is fucking hilarious to me. All right, there you go. That's what I would say. Blow him once a month as long as he keeps his seat down. That's my solution. All right. And God bless you and congratulations on your good relationship. All right. Uh, all right. Advice. I know this girl. I've known her for a bit. Uh, we're friends. We've been for a while. Okay. Now, this one, you know how everybody always trashes me for the way I fucking read. I know I suck at reading, but I have to let you know this is all in lowercase, and there's absolutely no punctuation whatsoever. I don't know if this guy text messaged this or what, but this is not my fucking fault. Let me try my best to read this. All right, Bill. I know this girl. I've known her for a bit, and we're friends. No period. We've been for a while. Comma. Anyway, about a month ago, I asked her out on a date, and she said yes. Comma. Continuing the sentence. He doesn't have periods. He just has commas. Lowercase i. Took her out, and we had fun. No period. We talked shit. Was hunky-dory. No comma. We kissed. It, no period. It was awesome. First date. It was an awesome first date. Hey, there's a period. No capital letter. Then I, I barely fucking heard from her. No period. I was running around like a fucking jackass. No period. Just trying to talk to her. And, oh, I'm sorry. I guess it keeps going. Just trying to talk to her. And when we would talk, it was fine. Oh, there's a period. I was beating myself up, going crazy. No period. I was some piece of shit. Anyway, I pulled myself together and I asked her out again. She once again said yes. Awesome, right? Well, not your fucking lack of punctuation. That's not awesome. So we go out again. Went cool again. I didn't kiss her this time. I don't know. It was just off. But anyway, comma. That was no punctuation in all of that, you fucking dick. Once again, I was fucking... Once again, I fucking didn't hear a thing. So I said, fuck it. I don't need this right now. And we just went back to being friends. Never talked about it. Just let it lay. I fucking see a double at this point. Anyway, lately I've been talking to her a lot. Like I said, like I said... We're friends, but she's very clearly been flirting with me, and I honestly have been flirting back. I still like the girl. No period, no nothing. But I just don't know if it's worth it. You know? Period. No question mark. She's got a, a lot of drama. She's one of these girls that gets drunk at a party and cries, then asks people if she's pretty, which she really fucking is, like really hot. Dot, 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 dot. Ugh. But I do like her. I just don't know if I should put myself through this shit again. What do you think, Bill? I legitimately, legitimately would like your advice slash opinion. Um, okay, the first thing I would do, I'd get some sort of spell check. I would get some sort of uh, um, phonics or some sort of shit to teach you how to write. All right, people? I know I suck at reading out loud, but can, can you do me a fucking solid? I'm not reading any more fucking emails that, that are like this. All right, because this is literally, I'm, I'm starting to lose my fucking eyesight. Um, so what do I think? Yeah, okay, this is what I think. I think you should definitely not get into a relationship with this girl. This girl, this girl is a fucking nightmare. All right, there's all kinds of red flags. I don't know what happened to her, and I can tell you right now, you don't want to find out what's happening to her. What happened to her? You don't want to find out in that you don't want to have feelings for this girl. All right, and when the other fucking bag of shit hits the floor and your heart is underneath it. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't let a girl like this break your heart, all right? You can see it from a mile away. She is a fucking mess, all right? There's plenty of great girls out there. You're a young guy. Go find one, all right? Find a girl, you know, make a list of shit, all right? One of the big things, if you want to find a really good girl, is find one who has a great relationship with her parents. Hopefully, they're still together. All right, that's another good thing. Start with that. But if they're sitting there, you think I'm pretty? They got low self-esteem issues. You're going to kill a decade of your fucking life trying to build them up. And it, you know what it's going to be? It's going to be fucking exhausting. All right? And then because she doesn't think she's pretty, she might act out sexually um, for some sort of, you know, I don't know, like, geez, I just really have an hour and six minutes in here. Just, you know, some sort of affirmation that she is pretty. Okay, so what do I think you should do? All right, well, if you're a well-adjusted guy, you'll just walk away from the situation and say that I'm not going to just bang her and use that as a fucking notch on my bedpost to make my ego feel good, and I'm not going to hurt this person. But if you're how most people are your age, I would just say bang her and then uh, 
I don't know. It's, it's going to be ugly. If you want to bang this girl, I got to tell you, don't let your heart get involved. And uh, I don't know. Not, not having seen her, not seeing how hot she is, and being older and more mature, I would say just walk away and go find some well-adjusted hottie. That's, unless you just want to bang somebody. But then you, you can do that. You know what it is about this thing? You know what I don't like? There's too much fucking history. You got to be able to leave. You got to be able to fucking go out the side door. If you're just going to bang somebody, you can't have this. Well, we were friends at first and then it became romantic. Then we went back to being friends and then we fucked. Eh, it's just a fucking nightmare. Yeah, I'd, I'd find someone else to fuck. But if you don't give a shit, yeah, I'd bang her. But by no means, don't develop any sort of feelings for her. All right? There you go. There's my advice. I'm okay. Should I say yes? Bill, I'm a 16-year-old virgin guy from Texas and really want to go balls deep in a snatch before college. Jesus Christ, dude. Rub one out before you text me next time. Or email me. Um, homecoming is in a week, and this girl who I talked to a lot last year doesn't have a date because her date didn't want to pay the 150 bucks. All right, you got yourself a wounded bird. Things are looking good so far. Uh, when this year started, we, ha we haven't talked, and I've never texted her. I don't know where she texted me. I didn't even have her number. Immediately, I knew it was going to be about homecoming because it was all about people we were talking about uh, that we, we Oh, fuck. Because it was all people we were talking about that week. She asked, me to go with, she asked me to go with her, but in a way that made me think she was using me so that she doesn't go alone. Yeah, there is a bit of that. She's definitely desperate, you know? You're kind of like the third-string quarterback, and they both went down, so they're sticking you in there. So I know what you're saying. Is she going to let me throw the deep ball, or am I just going to have to go in there and take a fucking knee, right? Or hand it off, go in the I formation or the wishbone. Anyways, he said, there's a pretty good chance I would get laid if I went. I told her I think I, that I would think about it. Then she offered to pay for the mum and the food. What is the mum? Does she really want to go with me? Should I say yes? And the host hopes that I get to slam her cunt. You know, dude, I really can't figure you out. It's like you're acting like a virgin by not saying yes to this layup, and then you're just really talking about her in a really disrespectful way. This girl is an angel. All right? The fact that she's going to give it up to a fucking... 16-year-old virgin, show a little bit of respect, but you might be also, this might be your insecurity that you are a virgin, so you're trying to talk really aggressively about something that you might have a little bit of fear about. I have no idea. Look, this is what you should do. If you're going to go with this girl, be a fucking sweetheart. All right? Make her laugh. Fucking dance her around the dance floor. Have a great goddamn time. And if the opportunity presents itself, have at it. All right? But that's how you go into it. I mean, she's already paying for it. What kind of a fucking man? I mean, I guess you're a pimp at this point. Um, a pimp virgin, you don't see that very often. Whatever you're doing, it seems to be working, but I just have a little more respect for her. That's all I'm saying. All right, go in there, have a good time. All right? What's that? What is that? What's that John Madden speech that Joe Bartnick always quotes? Tonight, today will be the greatest day of your life, but only if you win. <laughs> so good luck, man. I hope, you, I hope you win. All right? There you go. But be respectful. And uh, all right, let's plow ahead here. So anyways... Uh, I was twisting myself up in an emotional knot over this smoking hot chick that was messing with my mind. And my bro said, dude, are you a surfer? The way you're writing this? And my bro said, dude, um, just listen to Bill Burr's podcast. All right, so here we go. So I did, and now I'm writing you. The woman in question is a 5 foot 10 inch Brazilian brunette. Let me just stop for a second and congratulate you. Jesus Christ. Congratulations, sir. Um, anyway, 5 foot 10 inch Brazilian brunette. God bless you who I fucked a couple of dozen times. God bless you, two times. And ever since, has she's come in and out of my life and fucked with my head. Fuck with your head. You, you fucked her 20, 24 times. How is she fucking with your head, sir? He says she's sweet-talking me to death, but never putting out again. Her excuse was always, I have intimacy issues. Please be patient with me. Uh, oh, Jesus. Um, I always get text messages. Okay, right there, my gut is telling me that... In the beginning, during those two dozen times when she, when you fucked her, she didn't give a shit about you. But sometime between fuck number 20 and 24, she started to develop uh, feelings for you, which freaked her out, which is why, for some reason, now she can't have sex with you. Ah, oh, Jesus, dude, I think you got a nut job here. Um, I always get text messages from her about how much she loves and misses me, but when we try to hook up, she cancels at the last minute, or I end up leaving with blue balls and a hug. I'm a tall, good-looking guy, but I was getting hung up on this girl, believing her words and thinking we would hook up uh, again soon enough. Always she visited... Anyway, she visited me at the hospital after I donated a kidney to my bro. 
Um, is this for Keanu Reeves? Um, which I thought was cool. So after I released, I am released and recovering at home, I decide to, to, uh, to thank her. Oh, to send her a thank you note and some flowers for visiting. You know, to show my appreciation and perhaps butter her up a bit. Uh, I didn't know her exact address, so I Google her name. Nothing. So then I Google her phone number, thinking her address will come up. Nope. Instead, an ad pops up with a picture of her in sexy lingerie. Turns out she's a fucking escort. Boom, 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 um, I fell into a funk because here's this hot chick constantly texting me, telling me how much she loves me and misses me, telling me she has intimacy issues and for me to be patient. And I found out, find out she's fucking and sucking total strangers in New York City for the money. Yeah, that's intimacy issues. There's no emotional connection with those other people. Uh, he's, which is what in the beginning she didn't have with you, which is why she was fucking your brains out. Then all of a sudden she developed feelings for you, started to like you. You know, dude, you donated a kid kidney because your friend was in need. In my world, you're a hell of a guy. According to you, you're a good-looking guy. You're a good-looking guy who isn't vain enough, who actually gives up his own fucking kidney. All right? And is confident enough to talk shit to a 5-foot-10-inch Brazilian fucking beauty. All right? There's a lot there for her to like. So she started to like you, and she freaked out. So, uh, yeah, for some reason, she's afraid of that type of shit, and... Uh, and I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not even getting involved in the whole fucking uh, escort thing. But anyways, let, let's, um, let's plow ahead here. She sa he says, uh, I haven't told her yet that I know, but she keeps texting me the same old I love you and miss you messages. I'm like, what the fuck? My ego's taking a huge hit here. I was really falling for this chick. Now I am pissed that I've wasted so much time with her. Part, part of me wants to just walk away and ignore her. Part of me wants to confront her about it, not attack her for her choice of profession. Uh, but to get some sort of answer of why she stung me like that. Yeah, dude, you're, you're, you're just a good guy. You donate in your kidney. You're not going to call her a whore. You're not going to make her feel bad about her choice of profession. I can just tell you this, dude. Like, somebody who does that for a living had a horrific childhood. She probably got molested. Something fucking really bad happened to her, and it's sad. And uh, then she goes out, and she becomes an escort. And then other dirtbags who got hurt as kids... Then they take out their childhood on her in the bedroom every night. That's why it's such a fucking dirty, awful goddamn business. And uh, But you know what? It's not your fault, sir. And it's time for you stop for, to stop being such a giver. You already gave up a goddamn kidney. You're already giving enough that you're not going to fucking trash this girl for being, you know, in the awful situation that she's in, that she's an escort. Why don't you do something for yourself? You know? you got to be selfish at some point in your life. If you're going to be selfish picking who is the person you're going to spend your life with, that's the time to do it. All right? And I feel bad for her, whatever happened to her, but she needs to work that shit out. And, uh, you know, I think you've done enough for others in your life, sir. How about you do something for yourself and go out on a limb here? I'm going to say that a escort is not probably going to be the mother of your children. You know? And don't fall into this shit that you're going to rescue this person because you can't. She has to fucking do it herself. And she's not there yet. And uh, you got one life to leave. You already gave up a kidney. You, 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 you're done. You could drive a fucking SUV into a fucking goddamn pen of baby rabbits. And you're still good. <laughs> Start doing donuts on their little cute heads. But, ah, oh, Jesus, this is why I have no women listeners. Oh, my God, that's such a bad image. Um, yeah, fuck that. All right? Now, uh, I, knowing you, you're going to want to let this girl down easy for some fucking reason. And, uh... I don't know. I, that's that's up to you if you want to do it. But just don't get sucked back into a relationship, okay? Because that girl, uh, she needs to go to therapy. And she needs to go when she's fucking ready to go. And that's all on her. You do not need to deal with that shit. All right? You said you're a good-looking guy. Go find go find another fucking 5-foot, 10-inch fucking beauty who isn't an escort, who doesn't have intimacy issues. You know? That's it. That's all I got for you. All right. That's the podcast for this week. Came in just under an hour. I got to go put on my monkey suit and go fucking tell jokes to middle America. Um, that is it. Ah, Jesus Christ. Did I have the levels wrong the entire time? Why is that fucking so high? Oh, Jesus. All right, go fuck yourselves. I'll talk to you next week. I thought we didn't have enough questions this week, so occasionally I'll, I'll dip into my other fucking account here to see what we got. Come on, you old-ass fucking computer. So fucking slow here. All right. Dear Billy Costanza, uh, recently, what is that, Jason uh, Alexander fucking, because I'm bald and I yell. Uh, recently, I was in Boston for work and decided to visit a good old friend of mine from back in the day. 
While I was visiting, I happened to run into his younger sister, who is my age. Nothing creepy. Oh, Jesus. In high school, I was the bad boy class clown. Ah, oh, gee, what were you in, Greece? Fucking jerk off. I just pictured you in a leather jacket. I'll go Greece, love it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Um, I loved all those singing jerk offs like the people thought that they fucking built that car. They were in the glee club. All right, it's the burnouts, the burnouts down the hall and fucking woodshop and the power mechanics. They, they could do something like that. Anyways, and she was the, you know, I've never seen Greece. I've never seen it. Whenever I turn it on, they're always racing in the, in the L.A. River. And I think one time I saw the ending. But uh, never seen it. But I've seen all of Greece, too. And when I saw it, I enjoyed it. Um, all right, plowing ahead here. In high school, I was the bad boy class clown, man. You know me, man. I was a rebel. Do you have a raccoon tail hanging from the antenna of your car there, fucking shifty? And she was the nerdy, antisocial, flat-chested type. I always knew she had a thing for me, but I was too busy chasing all the who was over there. Well, Bill, it turns out she's become quite the young lady. Since then, master's degree, great corporate gig, a great rack. And then he writes, a great rack. And she happens to be single. She insisted she show me, you know, so fucking funny is the way guys look at women. I wonder if women do that. They just don't admit it. You know, it turns out, you know, it turns out, you know, he's got a strong jaw, a great job, a fucking fat pet, what you, a big wad, what would you say? A nice fucking, I'm literally sitting here and fucking acting like I'm grabbing dick and balls right now, trying to think of the fucking word. I don't know what the fuck they would say. Do you guys ever do that? Um, anyways, well, it turns out she became quite the young lady, blah, 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 and she happens to be single. She insisted she show me around town all, you know, all the touristy shit, so we exchanged numbers. Da -da. Later that day, when I got back to my hotel, we started texting. Boom, 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 boom. Now we, no big deal. Just catch up now. Just catching up. Okay. How you been? How's the family? Blah, 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 blah. Then we start talking on the phone. All right. And pretty soon your dick's up. I thought what she had for me in high school was ancient history, but no, the conversation soon took a turn and got romantic. And he writes, oh, Jesus. So we made plans to meet for the next day for lunch. The next day, hanging out with my buddy, I casually brought up if he would have a problem with me dating his sister. He insisted he had no problem with it. Hey, you know what, dude? I thought you were a piece of shit. There you go. All right. You... Such a weird thing. I, I could never ask my friend. You mind if I date your sister? You mean what? You mind if, I f if, you're f if you fuck my sister? Yeah, I do. You better marry her, you son of a bitch. So he's like, okay, great. So I take her to lunch. We do all the touristy stuff. Then I took her back to her place. While in the parking lot at her place, she is getting out of my car, and I go to give her a hug good night. This is when the hug turned into, into a kiss. Uh, she got back in my car, and we made out. Really hardcore, Bill. I was surprised at how aggressive she was, being all nerdy as she was. Why do people think nerdy women don't have needs, too? You know, they're just a little introverted. All you got to do is give him the green light. You know? Open the fucking door. Um, blah, 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 blah. Where the hell was I? I was surprised how aggressive she was. She asked, um, I was surprised how aggressive she was being all nerdy as she was, but there was something oddly sexy about it. Uh, she asked to, to ditch her place and go back to my hotel. Oh, fuck. Jesus Christ, dude. Jesus. So I say, okay, cool. On the way there, I started having second thoughts. I thought things might be moving too fast. I know, I know. What a pussy. No, dude, it's actually a very fucking, it's a mature choice there. If you got other women that you're just banging, this is, this is not somebody you can just discard. This is your friend's sister. You got to run into her again. You got to go easy on this one. It's a fucking ticking time bomb. So anyways, we go back to my room. Nothing happened. I cooled it off intentionally. We had a few drinks, talked, joked around while she laid on my bed. This is when I noticed that she laughed exactly like my buddy, her brother. Oh, no. The more she laughed, the more it's bothering me. Needless to say, that was the end of the night. A make-out session and a few drinks and some laughs. So here's my question, Bill. I think this girl is perfect for me. She's smart, educated, gorgeous girl, but how can I get over that laugh? All I could do was picture her brother, and nothing kills the mood more than that for me. Am I being a dick for thinking about passing up this girl, or is there something here, Bill? Thanks, and go fuck yourself. Um... I don't know if there's something there. You've got to tell me. But as far as I, as an outsider looking in, yeah, you can't be with that girl. You're going to end up fucking your friend. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, 
No, I know what you mean. I remember there was a buddy of mine I had, and his sister looked exactly like him with long hair. I mean, it was like, it was uncanny how much they looked like each other. And, you know, she was a nice person and everything, but it was, it was my friend in drag. And, you know, so much of a relationship, keeping it going is if you can make each other laugh. And if every time she fucking laughs, you got to break up with one, one of the two. I don't know. You break up with you. You can't be friends with him anymore. You just got to be with her long enough that that laugh it becomes her laugh. I don't know. Do you know what it really comes down to is, is how freaked out you are by it? You know? I mean, every guy's had this. You meet a girl in the bar and you're attracted to her and then she has the same name as your mother. It's like over, over, it's over. Done deal. You can't do it. Why? Oh, what's the matter? I can't tell you. Can't tell you. See you later, sweetheart. See you later. You are tra you're trampling on sacred ground there, sweetheart. Get it. What's your middle name? Because I want to address you by your name when I say to get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what you do there, buddy. I mean, if you actually feel like this, there's something there beyond the fact that you want to just bang her, which I don't think you have a problem finding women to bang, so maybe you do think of something about her. I don't know. Uh, that's going to be your, that would have to be your choice. Um, just personally, personally speaking. I don't know. If I met the girl that I thought was, you know, the one I'm supposed to be with. And she laughed like my best friend. Oh. Oh, my God. There's 7 billion people on the planet. You can't find some woman to fuck that doesn't laugh like your friend. Ah, oh, Jesus. You know, I'm not good at advice today. That even sounded ignorant to me. I could hear all the fucking women go, oh, God, he's so fucking stupid. Um, holiday friend. Billy O. Uh, I've been seeing this girl for about a month and a half. Handful of dinners and some sex. Very nice. You like to eat, you like to fuck. Who doesn't like doing that? This guy's over here like, eh, what do you want from me? She's super cool, but I'm emotionally unavailable. Oh, you son of a... You had a bad father? Bad parents? What happened? Huh? You get thrown in a burlap sack and beaten with a reed like fucking, uh, Dr. Evil? What happened to you? Um, he said, I got too much stuff going on with work to be thinking about a relationship. However, I'm enjoying this casual situation. She seems to be happy as well. Oh, Jesus, dude. You're going to break her heart, man. Women don't look at this, this shit the way we do. She seems happy as well because she's probably thinking it's going somewhere is what I'm guessing. Uh, and then one day you'll be like, yeah, you know, I'm not feeling it. And then she's going to start crying and be like, what the fuck? I thought we were just fucking. And then she'll go, that's all you thought this was? That's all I was to you this whole time? We went out, we got ice cream. You know, it's like, just picture Seinfeld crying. That's what you're going to hear. Why would you do that? Um, <laughs> however, I'm enjoying the casual situation. She seems to be happy as well. So what do, I, what do I get her for Christmas that doesn't make it look like I've made room for her toothbrush? Dude, you shouldn't get her anything for Christmas. Don't get her a fucking thing for Christmas. Don't fuck her until after Christmas. Why are you filling up her heart with hope? Don't do this. I've done this. You're going to hurt her. He goes, I was thinking about some small things, a book, and maybe a sweatshirt from this place on the beach that she likes. Oh, well, isn't that thoughtful? Dude, get her a pack of Fig Newtons. Like, share her a package of those. Let her know where you stand. He said, P.S., the last gift I bought a girl was a few years back. We've been dating for three years, and she cheated on me. Oh, we had been dating for three years, and she cheated on me. I found out over Thanksgiving, and when it came time to give Christmas presents... I handed her a frame with a poem. The first part of the poem was super sweet. She was getting emotional. Then she got to the last line, which read, After these words, your heart should feel heated. But instead, I'm going to peace because, bitch, you cheated. Holy shit. Wait a minute. Is that a true story? I don't even care if you made it up. You have to write back. I want to hear what happened. What the fuck did she say? Jesus Christ, dude, that's like, I'd expect like a, that's like, that's really deep, man. That's really clever. That's really intelligent. That's the kind of thing a woman would do. You know, we're usually just knees and elbows. So like, why did you suck his dick? You know, just start screaming at him. Because <laughs> then you know you're in a full Nelson by some other fucking jerk off. Dragging you away and you're in the right. That's really, uh, that's really amazing. Um, I would, I would say, I would say this, uh. 
Oh, wait, this is my podcast person texting me right now, trying to call me right now. He's getting on a plane, so that's why this podcast is late, all right? And also, I had to do this radio talk. Go oh, fuck yourselves, all right? It's the holiday week. I'm sitting here. My slippers. What are your thoughts? Um, my thoughts are you're, you're really going to hurt this woman. Because I feel like you haven't had a conversation with her. You said, you said, however, I'm enjoying this casual situation. And you said she seems to be happy as well. So that indicates to me that you guys haven't talked, sat down and talked this out. And I can guarantee you, if this woman is anything like the women that I've dated, it's already too late. All right? Um, she might be happy thinking like, oh, wow, he's taking it slow. He's really getting to know me. You know? He got me a sweatshirt from this place on the beach that I like. He's paying attention to me. He, he is noticing things about me. You know what it is, dude? You are actually, you're actually a relationship guy. But this other woman ruined you, and you got to get that hate out of your heart or the defensiveness out of your heart before you should be messing around with somebody like that. Like right now, what you should be doing is just going out and just, I don't know, working on yourself while fucking everything that moves or or maybe not you shouldn't be going like don't hurt this like i don't know what's going on because this is still very v vague but don't hurt this woman because that at last one hurt you i've made that mistake it's a bad it's bad dude and i and i i'm not judging you for being in that situation because you're a guy and you shouldn't understand them but now that i understand them a little bit more uh you know i'm, I'm t you're headed for a fucking if i had to guess you're headed for a, a rough christmas or shortly after christmas you know, when she goes, you want to meet my parents and I can wear this sweatshirt that you got me from the place on the beach that you like? You know, and she'll bring that up right after she just blew you in your Saturn. And you'd be like, yeah, you know, I was going to watch the Holiday Bowl instead with some buddies of mine. I'm going to watch the Outback State House, Steakhouse fucking bowl. And then she'd be like, well, wait a minute. Like, why? Oh, I, I don't understand. And then you'd be like, and then you're going to be starting to sense like, well, well what, what do you mean you don't understand? I just invited you to meet my parents and you, you like you don't want to meet them is these I'm a, little, I'm a little offended I mean these these are these are my parents ah 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 sounds going ah, 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 ah jaw starts hanging down you can't even understand what she's saying ah, 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 ah. and you're like and then she starts crying and then if you're like most guys you get mad because you're uncomfortable oh you're gonna fucking cry now I can't believe that I would be crying and you would say something who are you how are you? Okay, let me out of the car. Let me out of the car. And she fucking rolls into a snowdrift. I'm telling you, dude, you, you, don't, you don't want to go down this road. I, I got a bad feeling. I got a bad feeling about this one, man. Um, just make sure that she's enjoying this the same way you are. Dude, who wouldn't like to be with the super cool girl that you don't have to fucking be emotionally involved with who's coming over and banging you? And let me tell you something, dude. This is not 100% on you, so don't feel guilty because she also hasn't sat down and had the conversation. Maybe she has her baggage. Maybe she sat down and said that to some other guy and it scared her away. And she said, okay, not to stop. Did I bring up uh, is this guy? I said, I suck a dick and hope that he loves you too. All right, smoking problems. Hey, Bill, what's up? Nothing much. What's up with you, dude? Uh, my husband. Yes, I'm a lady. Oh, I love when a woman writes in, finally. Maybe if I wasn't such a dick, more would write in. My husband, yes, I'm a lady, introduced me to your podcast last year, and we both think you're awesome. Well, that's great. Uh, we've been together for nearly 17 years and have two young children together. I'm hoping that you can do something using your unique sense of humor and perspective. That I, um, all right, that I have been unable to do after years of nagging, and that is to try and convince him to quit smoking. Uh, you know something? I don't consider that nagging. You're trying to save his fucking life. All right, she says, I know you... You like to look after your health, and he really respects what you have to say. I want him to be healthy, not just for his own sake, but so he's around for a long time for myself and the kids. When we retire in 30 years or so, I want us to have health and money to travel the world and enjoy ourselves after a lifetime of working. Cigarettes are incredibly expensive in Australia, around $20 a pack, and are only set to get more expensive. This habit costs thousands every year. Thanks for your help, Bill. Please never stop doing what you're doing. Oh, that's nice. You're welcome. Um... Oh, she says, Australia next. Come to Newcastle, just north of Sydney. Go fuck yourself. Um, well, listen, if I'm jumping on a 14-hour flight, you can't come one down, one fucking city south for me. Listen, next year I'm doing Perth to Sydney. All right? I guarantee it, or else I'll go on YouTube, and I'll apologize like Paula Dane. 
Um, I, I'm sorry that I never came out to Australia. Uh, all right. You guys sound like you're pretty young still. And that's just the thing. You think you're going to fucking live forever. And I'll tell you what I have learned now that I'm in my 40s, unfortunately, is once you hit 40, it's no joke. All right. When you hit 40, whatever you've whatever you've been doing since you started being a knucklehead in your teenage years starts to take not even take root. It starts to blossom. It comes to fruition, if you will. All right. If you've kept yourself in shape and, and you've eaten healthy, you know, you go back to your high school reunion and people tell you how great you look. All right. If you've been eating like a fucking maniac and smoking and all that type of shit in your 40s, unfortunately, I've learned the hard way is when people start to die. You know, there's nothing funny about this shit. Look at look at uh, uh, James Gandolfini. You know, that fucking guy was doing what I've done, but he was just doing it too much. He's doing what we all doing, overindulging. Everybody does that. I mean, I shouldn't say this like I fucking know, but like, you know, I've lost way too many fucking friends, way too many friends in the business and outside the business. I'm telling you when, you know, and this isn't to tell your husband to wait till he's 40. Uh, basically, from what I've read, is your body is designed to go 150 years. That's how great your body is. And that's how fucked up the environment is and the amount of shit that you're going to encounter that it has to start counting down to 150 just so you can make it to 70 or 80. All right? And there's already enough shit, enough wear and tear, enough crap. Forget about all the man-made radiation fucking uh, radio waves and all this shit and what the fuck we're putting in our food. There's already enough shit out there that can get you. And you're just, you're basically, you're in the fast lane and you're going to die. You are basically, you're going to die, or you're going to have fucking emphysema. This is what got me to never fucking smoke. When I was in fifth grade, this guy came to the school, and he said, if you want to know what it's like to have emphysema, he goes, make a fist. So you make a fist, and you, ah, oh, shit. What did I just do there, huh? Ah, I turned down the fucking volume. Sorry about that. I just stepped on my mixer. Um, he basically said, he said, make a fist. All right? This is hilarious. This is what you tell your husband. Just say... And this, <laughs> just say, hey, honey, do me a favor. Make its fist like you're going to mime like you're sucking a dick. <laughs> That's what you do. You know what's funny is the amount of people who are in cubicles right now looking over their shoulder because they want to see the emphysema thing. Bring it right up to your mouth. Now that I did the dick thing, every guy stopped. But they'll do it when they're home alone tonight. You know, they'll turn up the TV and bring down the curtains and they'll try it. Basically, you try to breathe into your fist. Try to draw in through your mouth, through your fist. That's from, according to this guy, what it was like to have emphysema. And that's what, you, that's what you're headed towards. I don't know if you guys have a daughter. I mean, what if, what if you're not around to make sure she doesn't marry some douchebag? What if the guy is a dick, but you're so frail at that fucking point because you can't do a pull-up anymore, and you got that little fucking wheelie walker thing, and you're coming in with the oxygen tank and the shit up your fucking nose? You know, I'm telling you, all of that shit, people start getting those uh, gin blossoms on their nose right around 40. All of it, all of it fucking comes, comes to a head at 40. But if you take care of yourself, if you keep yourself in shape in your 20s and your 30s and that type of thing, it, 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 it pays off fucking tenfold. And uh, considering you have kids, man, you, you, you owe it to them. You owe it to them, all right? Jesus, wasn't this just sort of a feel-good podcast? You'd think I'd be more of a cunt after my team lost. Bullied at work. Hi, Billy Buff Boy. Uh, I work in an office with several young females, so several young ladies. Um, sounds good. Right? Wrong. I'm the only young male here. So what's wrong? They like to gang. He said gain. G-A-I-N. Gain up on me. It's gang. G-A-N-G. -G. Gang up on me. And constantly put me down or make fun of me. It started out all fun and games, but some of them have recently become very aggressive and are almost verbally attacking me. What? What? I don't understand. What is the problem here? When I brought it up to them... It just made it worse and made me more of a target. Yeah, dude. You never got bullied before? The last thing you say to a bully is, hey, what you're doing is really bothering me, just so you know. Um, what can I do to make this situation better without getting management involved? I don't want to get them fired or anything. I just want... I just don't want to be the female punching bag anymore. Thanks. Um, I don't understand what is going on here. What are they saying to you? If they're giving you shit, you got to give them shit back. 
You know what I mean? Come on, man. Defeating a fucking woman in a, in a verbal thing, you, you know where you have to go, but you, you can't go there because then they're going to rat you out to the boss. This is what you do. Just walk in, right? Just walk in with your eyes squinting one day. You know, looking like an idiot. Just walk in just and blinking a lot, just squinting. And walk right up to the one with the smallest chest. <laughs> Yeah, don't do that. I was just going to say, just do that. And she goes, what are you doing? Just go, oh, I'm trying to see your titties. <laughs> That's so childish and stupid, but unbelievably effective. And I think, I mean, I'm not going to speak for women here, but what I really think it is, is women realize the unbelievable power that they have over guys with their looks. So if you ever indicate that there is a flaw in their looks or that they're starting to slip, it really fucks with them. It's too mean. I, dude, I, I don't have fucking sympathy for you. What are they? They're just verbally abusing you. Give them shit back. Give them. What are they saying? R right back to me. Right back to me. What, what the fuck? What, are you one of those kids? Did you always wear a helmet when you rode a bicycle? Did you have play dates? Are you part of that fucking generation, dude? Come on, man. Snap out of it. Yeah, I just I would just be like, hey, what? What are you cunts going to stop being such cunts? Something. You got. You got to shoot something across the bow. You got to give him shit, dude. You got to give him shit. Just point at whatever they're wearing. Be like, oh, my God, where did you get that? And then just keep walking. That's all you have to do. That fucks up a woman's day. What do you mean by that? Do you really think that? Huh? You just give it back to him. Just give it back to him, dude. I, I don't you fucking grow a dick and give it back to him, man. Come on. This is this is like this whole fucking thing. I'm guessing you're a younger person. Oh, you said a young male. Yeah, you've been completely beaten down. To the point where you're now, you know, we went from men beating women with fucking mop handles a hundred fucking years ago to now this, this to the point of a complete overcorrection that you're going to sit here and allow yourself to get verbally abused because they're women. I do like the fact that you don't want to be a rat and rat them out. This is what you got to do, okay? Treat them with the same level of respect they're treating you. Uh, I would avoid name calling and I would definitely not curse. But other than that, I would be just as fucking mean as they are. I just do. They're so easy to fuck with. The next time one of them says something to you, just offer her some gum and just keep doing it and just being like, listen, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I don't know what you've been eating lately, but I've noticed it over the last few days. And just invent in their head that they have this fucking halitosis. That's that's it. And then you divide and conquer. It's, it's a joke, dude. It's not that fucking hard. You know what I mean? Just tell them which one you think is the most attractive and why and let the other two losers fucking deal with that. And the other one will actually feel good that you said it about her. So now she's not fucking with you. And then the other two are pissed at the other girl. And then, then you got some infighting. And don't bring it down to looks. Just say, you know, just you got to. She has a certain level of class that the other two of you lack. I'm not trying to be a jerk. And you just fucking leave it nice and vague like that. That's all you do. And all I'm doing is taking a page out of their book because women are masters at that vague mind fuck and then walking away. It's a work of art. I don't even think they have to work at it. They're just born with it. It's tremendous. It probably goes back in the day from when they were dragged around from cave to cave by their fucking hair. They had to say something that mind fucked the hairy douchebag that was about ready to take advantage of him so they could walk away before he fucking dragged him into the cave. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm just fucking talking all kinds of shit here. Right. Um, married women. Hey, Bill. I know what I'm doing is wrong. Oh, Jesus. I'm a single guy who became friends with a married woman at work. Here we go. Devious maids. We have a ton of stupid shit in common. We even like the same flavor chips. I know. It's retarded. Uh, we became Facebook friends. How did you become Facebook friends? Why don't you just be honest with me? You saw her. You wanted to fuck her. And you knew she was married. And you didn't give a shit. All right. I've been there. Um, here we go. We have, we have like the same flavor chips. We became Facebook friends and little by little her messages started getting sexual. Yeah. And I'm sure you didn't facilitate that on any, you, you, you weren't stoking those fucking flames or whatever the expression goes. You weren't fucking blowing on the hot coals at all. Right. You were just sitting there talking about earth, wind and fire. And all of a sudden she's like, speaking of fire, my pussy is raging right now for your cock to be in it and you were like whoa hey where did that come from i i was just talking old r&b music um it's at the point where she comes right out and told me she wants to fuck me 
she's smoking hot with no kids, and it's so fucking hard not to do something. It goes against all my beliefs, but I can't stop thinking about it. I have a feeling she wants out of her marriage, but I don't want to be a homewrecker. Uh, I've also have to see her at work, so it's extra hard to tell her, to, just tell her to fuck off. I listen to you every Monday, and you usually tell guys to whack it and see if the feeling goes away. Well, I already did that, and it didn't work. I'm just an average attractive guy and want to fuck her, but like I said, I know it's wrong. Can you just come to Canada and shoot me in the fucking head? <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, and he said, from Scotland. Oh, so she's loving that accent. Um, all right, dude. Not only are you going to be fucking a married woman, it's where you work. And the odds of that coming out. And once you start fucking somebody at work, as much as you try and keep it on the down low, everybody knows. They can tell by your body language. Everybody at work already knows that you guys want to fuck each other. They already know that. So when you do fuck, everybody's going to know that. And then in six months, when you go to get a raise and you walk in there and it's either going to be A, you're sitting across the desk from some other guy that wanted to fuck her but didn't and is jealous of you, or B, it's a woman who's jealous of that hot bitch that you fucked and wants to be as skinny as her and is actually annoyed on some subconscious level that you didn't try to fuck her even though she wouldn't have fucked you. Either way, it's going to affect your money. Uh, don't do it. Don't do it. Been there, done that. Trust me, don't fucking do it. It does not end well. All right? You don't want that on your resume. It's awful. It's awful. It's an unforgivable act. Um, don't do it. All right? You don't want to do it. Your dick wants to do it. And this is a great opportunity to be the fucking, to steal from the Seinfeld show, to be master of your domain. All right? You don't have to tell her to fuck off. Just say, listen. All right? I would love to have sex with you too, but I can't do it while you're still married. So when that situation changes, come by and knock on the non-existent door of my cubicle, and I will put you right on my fucking generic plastic desk that everybody else has that was fucking bulk ordered from some staple somewhere, and I'll fuck you in front of everybody. And I'll have my fucking O face right over the top of the cubicle, and I'll fuck you right here at work, but until then, get out of my crib. What movie was that, Get Out of My Crib? I've been asking some of the ladies to write in, and uh, finally, I haven't even read this yet, but this already seems like gold. This is this is the the on the subject line of this email. Uh, it says, "I think the guy I'm dating is a pussy." <laughs> Hello, Bill. I am a 21 year old student. I began listening to your podcast recently, and I heard you complaining about how women have not written in in a while. And being a woman myself, decided to do so and ask you for advice. Well, God bless you. Uh, I live at home with my mom and go to college. I recently found a very nice guy uh, there at college and was really into him. But then I started suspecting something strange. I started suspecting that maybe he was a pussy. <laughs> at first, I thought it was pretty harmless. But then one night, we had a house party and everyone was pretty drunk. And a friend of mine, who I haven't seen in a while, was there. And when everyone was way, way, way past drunk... She tried to get into a fight with me and eventually pushed me down the wall, then stole my iPhone, and he was there and did nothing. Jesus Christ. I was so scared that I called my ex to come get me, and he did. Wow. Uh, you think you're dating a pussy? I mean, that right there. Gee. And he just stood there and let this other guy who used to hook up with you come in riding in on his white horse? Anyways, my ex was more of a man than the guy I was dating. Now, even though the guy I'm dating was drunk, I felt like he should have protected me or done something, anything. He did nothing. And later, he even confessed to me that he was scared of my drunk fr friend and even scared of me. What the fuck, right? Even though he says this will never happen again, I have enough knowledge to know that people do, do not usually change like that. You know, that's a really wise... That you're really wise for your age. At 21, if, you, if you're already not buying into the... I'm going to change. That's uh, your your wise beyond your years. You know, they say that you're basically your psychological makeup is done by the time you're three. So if you see some little toddler standing there while somebody's taking his blocks, that kid's going to be a pussy. <laughs> anyway, so should I be upset or give him another chance? Is this a deal breaker? Is there no way to change a guy from a pussy to a real man? Should I just break off, things off with him? And if so, should I remain friends with him? Thanks, Bill, and I hope you read this. Uh, I love you and Nia. Oh, that's nice. Um, all right. This is the deal. Uh, you were asking a question. Is there no way to change a guy from a pussy to a real man? No, I, I don't think... 
I think that that happens. I think it happens way more in movies where somebody has a life-changing moment. Uh, and then they just decide, I'm not going to take shit anymore. But even then, that just begins the journey of not being a pussy. You don't just say, I'm not going to be a pussy, and then bam, you're not a pussy anymore. You have to, you got to work your way up. It's like if you were 100 pounds overweight, and you're like this, I'm done. I'm not eating fucking ice cream anymore. The next day, you don't have a six-pack. You know, it takes a fucking year or something. You, you really got to turn it around. So, um, I don't know. What are you looking for in a guy? I mean, I, I think the fact that you're writing me and you're saying, I think the guy I'm dating is a pussy. I mean, that, that actually hurts me on some level. Just because I insert myself into this story and the person I'm dating would be calling me a pussy. Or it could be the ex, I guess. I don't know. This isn't about me. This is about you. Come on, Bill. Stop being selfish. All right. Um... I think you've totally lost, lost respect for this guy. And if you don't respect the person you're with, eventually you're going to blow somebody else, you know, if you don't break up with this guy. That's what I'm predicting. If you don't break up with this guy, you're just going to cheat on him just to facilitate getting out of the relationship because, uh, you know, to get to that LL Cool J moment, we can just be fucking honest. But I don't think you like that. I, with something about you knowing that people don't change at your age and the fact that you like, you know, this guy's a pussy. He's not sticking up for me. And the fact that he didn't stick up for you and then you took charge and say, well, I'm going to fucking call somebody who will. I mean, technically, you should have fucked your ex-boyfriend that night and he, and he shouldn't have been mad. He should have been like, and he probably wouldn't have been because he's a pussy. Yeah, you know, I understand. I mean, you know, when you needed a big swinging dick, I mean, God knows it wasn't me. So, uh, yeah. Um, I think if you don't break up with this guy, you're actually fighting nature. All right? And... You guys are wired to, to, I know, you guys aren't wired to, to just have kids with pussies. You know what I mean? You want a strong son, right? You don't want, to, you don't want that pussy DNA in your kid, right? Oh, that's going to kill you. Imagine that, you have a kid with this guy, and you want this kid to be like, uh, like your ex-boyfriend, and it comes out, and it's like this fucking little wormy worm guy. Ah, it'll be awful. Walking down the aisle to marry this guy with that sheepish, I don't deserve you. I can't. You don't want that. You want this guy to be the man standing down there in a white tuxedo like fucking Roger Moore and James Bond. I think, I think uh, look, I don't know if this just happened and you're really upset. So, uh, you know, and like and in three days you're not going to care and you're going to go back to having a picnic with this guy. Because for all I know, your ex who came coming back, maybe you broke up with him because he cheated on you. Maybe he was too much of a guy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so then you said, well, all right, I'm going to, maybe I'm this next time I'm dating a nice guy. So now you dated a nice guy. The thing about it is sometimes you date a nice guy, they can be so nice that they're pussies. All right. And look, I'm not, I'm not sitting there acting like, you know, if I'm out with my girl in some fucking 200 pound, 300 pound jacked fucking 25 year old comes up and starts doing shit that I'm going to start swinging because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting my fucking head kicked in just for the fuck of it no you know what i mean i mean it's not like just you know straight across the board as a guy you have to fucking go and get your goddamn head kicked in but this was a fucking woman this was a lady i mean he's jesus I mean, it's that it, it is a weird situation in defense of him where how do you get the fucking iphone back you start wrestling with her and now you're kind of fucking throwing a girl around so you're looking at that possible assault charge because god knows that's how the world worked works right now your Honor, I was trying to steal a phone, and he, he, this guy assaulted me. And you're going to be sitting there going, she was stealing a phone, and they're not going to be able to get past you're, you're a guy, and she's a girl. But, um, you know, he should have just, he should have just held her by the back of her pants so she couldn't leave and just stayed out of reach of her swinging. <laughs> That's what you do if you're in that situation as a guy. You just reach down, you grab by the back of their pants, and you just start running in a circle until cops get there. So they can't swing at you. They're running backwards. I mean, I don't know what you, you got. You got to fucking do something. And he didn't do anything. That's the big thing. If you told me, honestly, if you told me that this was some giant guy who could kick the shit out of him, uh, I wouldn't say that the guy's a pussy. You know what I mean? I mean, what is the point of going in and getting a concussion, getting your tooth driven up through your fucking nose? The guy's still going to leave with your phone. You know, that's that old... Uh, Richard Pryor bit. Macho man, I'll take that knife and stick it up your ass. Macho man. It's like, no, you're going to get the shit kicked out of you. But this was a woman. All right, Bill, for fuck's sakes, quit your goddamn rambling. Wrap it up. Um, 
I think you know what you want to do and you should do it. Um, you are dating a pussy. The fact that when he was sober, he said that he was scared of her and of you. Uh, he seems like he's a little verklempt. And uh, I just can't imagine. This is going to be a stereotype, but a guy like that actually putting it on you in the bedroom. I really don't. He probably stares at you in the eye. Am I hurting you? Is everything okay? God, you're so beautiful. I mean, come on. All right, flip her over, mush her face in the pillows. Um, oh, she says, and P.S., don't worry. Uh, that cunt I used to call a friend who pushed me and took my phone is no longer in my life. Did you get your phone back? Well, what happened with you guys? Now, wait a minute. What, like, can I hear the follow-up here? There's so many different ways that this could be going. Was that like a girl, like when you thought that maybe you were uh, swinging another way? And all of a sudden you broke up with her and uh, eh, probably not. It's just my own red shoe diary kind of fucking thing. Um, hey, Bill, I need some advice about what a girl did to me. What this fucking broad did to me over here. Uh, you see, this person says, okay, so I started talking to this girl and we hung out. And you know what? We had some fun. She's beautiful. Has a great personality. FYI. What pisses me off is the way she led me on by telling me how lucky she was to have met me and all this other bullshit. So I started to fall for this broad over there. Uh, she's the first girl that I ever fell in love with. Uh, this is way... Oh, wait. This is, she's the first girl that I ever felt this, this way before. Now, was that me or him? She's the first girl that I ever felt this way before. No, that's him. And it's both our first year in college. So out of fucking nowhere... She tells me that she's got a fucking boyfriend, which got me fucking mad. This guy's dropping the up on him. I'm, I'm believing it here. So my question is, why did she lead me on just to drop me for some other fucker? Uh, is this guy Mexican? For some other fucker? Uh, I'm stupid because I still like her. Set me straight, Bill, and tell me what you would do in that situation and if that ever happened to you before. Thanks. Um, oh, Jesus, did it ever happen? Oh, absolutely. I've been both of those people. <laughs> I've been the douche, and I've been you. Um... All right, let's see here. Why did she do that? Because she's young. You're both young. Let her go, man. She could have she done she, What could have happened to you is so much worse, okay? She could have, uh, I don't know. You could have married her, had a couple of kids with her, and then, then you find out that she wants to be with somebody else. That could have happened. You got off easy. You're young. You're in the prime of your fucking life, you know? You're in your first year of college, dude. You're, you're a number one draft pick. You got your whole life ahead of you, you know? I mean, like, like, the level of fucking ass that you could be banging right now just out of she, she, the, the sheer potential that your life still has. And what's great about it, your age, you don't really have to prove anything. All you have to do is be majoring in something that sounds like there's a bunch of cash at the end of the rainbow. You tell a fucking couple jokes, you're in there. Okay? So whatever. You know, look, here's one way to look at it. You know, you got, let's just say that she isn't just young and immature because that's what that sounds like. Um... That's, that's best case scenario. She might be an absolute psycho, at which point you totally got off easy because uh, she's out of your life. So what I would do is uh, what I always say. This is what you want to do. Next time you see her, you're going to look great because you're going to go to the gym. You're going to get fucking jacked. All right? You're going to get in the best shape of your fucking life, and you're going to start hitting on ass fucking two, three levels above her. And one of them's going to say yes. It's the law of averages. Then someday you'll run into her and be like, would you look at that fucking broken down hunk of shit that I actually was worried about? You know, now look at me. And I'm not saying this new girl isn't going to crush you too. <laughs> That's, that was bad for me to say that. I'm going to get you to the point where you, you can't trust people. But, uh, you know, so it's, a, it's one, of the, uh, one of the growing pains of finding, finding whoever the fuck you're supposed to be with, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry she did that to you. It sucks. Um, I have had that happen to me. I was, uh, how can I tell this story without getting anybody in trouble? Um, it was one of my earlier relationships. Uh, this woman was a musician. She was a lot older than I was, and she was in a band. Uh, and there was another dude in the band who was married to another chick that was in the band. And, um, you know, she quit her day job and started spending a lot of time over this guy's house writing. I'm doing the air quotes right now. Writing. Working on music, writing. <laughs> uh, the dude's wife was getting upset, was saying, I don't like you spending all this time with this other woman. He said, it's innocent. We're just writing. We're over here writing. And um, 
my girl came home to me and said she was upset that this other broad would ever think that, oh, my God, how the fuck, you know, uh, that she would ever do something like that. She's like, I would never do something like that. I love the guy, but as a friend, I'm just over there writing. <laughs> Long story short, me and this woman break up. I start a comedy career, and about a year and a half later, I'm doing a show. And uh, who, comes up to, who comes up to me at the end of the show? The wife of the guy that my old girlfriend was writing with. And I say, hey, good to see you. She's like, yeah, I can't believe you're doing comedy. That's awesome. I'm like, yeah, great to see you and all that type of shit. And I was like, hey, where's so-and-so? And she goes, oh, she's with your, girl, your ex-girlfriend now. And, her, and I was just like, Jesus Christ. And uh, I realized that they probably were not writing when we were dating. <laughs> and I would love to tell you that I only had one of those stories, but I, I had a number of those. I had like uh, I had like three women that I know of that did that, you know. And then I fucked around too in relationships. So I mean, what are you gonna do? Well, you give some, you take some. Well, what are you gonna do? It happens. It happens. People, human beings, they fuck up. They make mistakes, you know. But you got off easy. You got off easy. Jesus Christ! I told you that fucking story, didn't I? I know I told this one before that time. I'm, I'm, oh my God. That was right when I knew I was going to be a comic. I was, I went to one of her shows, and they were in this band. I can't say the name of the band. All right, I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble, but they made these sweatshirts for the band that they were selling after the show, and they were all white. And they said the name of the band in like this Miami Vice pastel, okay? And it's the early '90s, so the pastel look is fucking at least. I mean, that was mid '80s. This is early '90s, so. They're going to sell these after the show. And the woman I was dating said she wanted me to wear the sweatshirt during their fucking show. And I was, everything in me was screaming, going, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. But for some reason, I was at that age. I was, I was afraid of having a confrontation. Um, and I, I fucking did it anyways. I sat in the crowd at their fucking show. They had an outdoor show during the day. And I sat there with a sweatshirt on, written in pastel with the name of their band. Ugh. I, you know, it's unfucking believe. Why didn't I just say, that was so much of my adult life, was learning to just say, no, I don't want to do this. Um, you know, because I, I had like more of a, uh, you know, my childhood upbringing was, hey, sit down and shut the fuck up, you know? When that is like the communication that is going on as you're growing up, like you will find yourself sitting at a show wearing <laughs> a sweatshirt with pastel writing on it and not knowing that you have all the power to be like, I don't want to do this and take it off um, or just not put it on, you know. But I'm glad I didn't say no because the only way I knew how to say no then was I really would have hurt her. I couldn't just say, listen, um, I'm not wearing it. It's too effeminate. Okay, do you have any guy ones? You know, you got a black one in there with like it's written in <laughs> something other than pink and aqua fucking blue. All right. I was kidding. Oh, if I, if I really loved her, I would have, wouldn't have had a problem. If I was really comfortable with who I was, I would have fucking, I would have cut the sleeves off. I would have tied it off, right? And just fucking skip right down the aisle professing my love. But I didn't love her. So I don't give a shit that she banged that guy in the band. Good for her. Good on you. Lady from my life fucking 25 fucking years ago. Oh, Jesus. That was an oh, Jesus one right there. That was another yet a the zillionth oh, Jesus moment in my life. Well, let me tell you, I had a rough one out there, you know.